the meaning of 666. Because the Bible does give us clues. And to properly understand the meaning of 666, you have to first understand at least a thumbnail of biblical numerology. For example, the number 7 in the Bible is connected to God throughout the Scriptures. And it's important that you understand that. And the number 7 connected with God is because it always represents perfection, completeness, and wholeness. Be sure to put that in your notes. When you read through your Bible, the number seven is always connected to God, and it represents wholeness, completeness, and perfection. And by the way, both spiritual and physical. Because in the Hebrew, the number seven has the exact same number of constants as the word for completeness or wholeness. Seven derives much of its meaning from being tied directly to the story of creation in the first book of, of the Bible, the book of Genesis. In the story of creation in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, we read that on the seventh day, God rested. On the seventh day, God rested. Again, it speaks of perfection, completeness, wholeness. God had completed creation. The number seven is found 735 times in your Bible. And if we were to include seventh or sevenfold, that number goes up uh, by over a hundred. But the number seven is found 735 times in your Bible. And as we read and study the book of Revelation, what we're using today is our, uh, our text. The number seven, do you know how many times it's found in the book of Revelation in 22 chapters? 54 times. The number seven is found in the book of Revelation. In Revelation we read of God's great wrath and judgment that is clearly prophesied that will soon come upon this ungodly world. Uh, these judgments are seen in seven seals, uh, seven trumpets, seven bowls. Uh, the Bible speaks in Revelation of seven thunders, etc. We find it in the Bible 54 times in the book of Revelation. Now why do I establish the number seven in connection with God, with perfection, with it being throughout the entirety of the biblical narrative. Because to understand what 666 represents, you must first understand the significance of the number 7. The Antichrist, this coming one world leader, Revelation tells us he is going to openly claim that he is God. He's not just going to claim to be a world leader. He's not just going to claim to be an answer to world political, uh, geopolitical, economic, etc. problems. He's going to literally claim to be God. There'll be no mistaking during the seven-year tribulation period who the Antichrist is. He will not just be a unique political leader that stands head and shoulders above the rest. He'll be the only one on the planet who is blatantly claiming, I am God. If the Antichrist were indeed God, then his number should be 777. But it is not, because he is not God. You see, if we were to do a study of numerology, and that's not the focus of today's study, you've learned today that in biblical numerology, seven is connected with God. Uh, right from the very beginning in the story of creation and throughout the scriptures, 54 times in the book of Revelation, over 700 times in the Bible. But man's number in the Bible is six. Six in the Bible speaks of man. It speaks of carnality. It speaks of that which is lesser than seven. The number of man is six. God created man on the sixth day of creation. Man was created by God. Man, listen, man is a creation. He is not the creator. So six represents man. 
It represents falling short of perfection and wholeness. Six represents that you are not deity. You will always be short of deity. And for this reason, the number of the Antichrist, 666 in the Bible, is a clear indication, first of all, that he claims to be God, but he is not God. He is merely a fallen man pretending to be God. Uh, I'm not going to uh, go down the road of numerology, but I will just state this. I've always found it interesting that the number of the name Jesus in Greek is 888, but that's for another study. So number two, the mark is a literal, visible mark. The 666 mark connected with this man who is identified by the number 666 is a literal, visible mark. So in your notes, number two, 666, the mark of the beast will be a literal, visible mark. Note that verse 16 is translated, given a mark on. Now, for some of you that have Bibles uh, that were translated before uh, probably the 1800s or so, uh, you may find the word a mark in, but that is an incorrect rendering of the original uh, Greek text. Uh, the King James Bible uh, translates the mark in, but the Greek word is epi. And epi in the Bible always means on or external. And some would say, well, isn't that just a, a minor detail? No, it's actually quite significant. Because if the mark of the beast were in the skin, that allows for it being under the skin. That allows for it being a different type of technology that's not visible. Then it would not be seen. So it is a vitally important point that the Bible says from the original Greek word epi, E-P-I, always translated properly on or upon. Very important in your understanding of this part of Bible prophecy in this part of the book of Revelation. 666, the mark of the beast, whatever that will be, we do not, not, we do not yet know, will be visible. It'll not be hidden. It'll not be on a credit card or a smart watch or in your cell phone, it will be on a mark, a stamp, engraved, branded. All of those words would be properly connected to the Greek word epi, which by the way, that is why all modern accurate translations, and not all translations of the Bible are accurate. Uh, if you're a new student, at some point, listen to our Bible study on which translation of the Bible is the most accurate because not all modern translations are accurate. They're, they're not all full translations. For example, one of the very popular translations of the Bible right now is called the Passion Bible. Uh, I wouldn't own one. I wouldn't give one away. It's not a proper translation. It is terrible. It was actually written by one man who doesn't even have the scholarship to do so. But I'm not on that subject today, but I'm just wanting you to be clear on this. 666, the mark of the beast from the Greek, epi, is on. It is a visible, literal mark. The Bible states that the mark of the beast will be placed either upon a person's forehead or upon the back of the right hand. And that is going to take place during the seven-year tribulation period. Number three, the mark 666 will be given as a sign of devotion to the Antichrist. The mark of the beast 666 will be given as a sign of devotion to the Antichrist. Many people speak of the mark uh, and they refer to it in their biblical teaching and in their theological lectures and the emphasis is 
usually placed upon it is a one world cashless society technology. Now that's accurate, but that is not the main reason for the mark of the 666 that we find in Revelation chapter 13. Actually, the Bible tells us that it's twofold. Uh, look at Revelation 13 and verse 12. He exercised all the authority of the first beast, and he required all the earth and its people to worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. The purpose of 666, the mark of the beast, is twofold. And if you're taking notes, the mark of the beast, 666, its purpose is twofold. Number one, it is a mandated cashless economic system that will be severely enforced. The Bible said people that rebel will be put to death. There'll be no exception for that. There'll be no quarantine for 14 days or uh, not able to travel or uh, locking down bank accounts. None of that play stuff. You will either submit to this global corrupt demonic leader or the Bible says that you will be put to death and many will be beheaded. The Bible says that all who refuse the mark, and by the way, Revelation chapter 7 speaks of the greatest revival the world has ever seen. Did you know that the greatest revival the world has ever seen has not yet happened and will not happen before the rapture? It happens after the rapture. Revelation 7 tells us, I saw a great multitude that no man could number. And of course, I have studies on that. I hope you've listened to them. If not, put it on your list of things to do. But Revelation 7 speaks of a mass number. No one could even number it that are saved. These are tribulation saints. These are not church age believers. Church age believers have already been raptured. The rapture is the next major prophetic event after the rapture, we enter into, according to Revelation, a seven-year period of time called the Great Tribulation, or perhaps a better theological term is the Tribulation, because if I were teaching this in a seminary or a Bible college, I would point out the distinction that the first half of the Tribulation is three and a half years in length, and the second half is an escalated much worse, apocalyptic escalation of judgment and wrath. And so theologically, if you want to be proper about it, the entire seven years is called the tribulation period. And the last half, the last three and a half years, is the great tribulation. Now, I'm not going to uh, correct anybody that calls it the great tribulation. Some of my great heroes in the faith that I grew up listening to referred to it always in their books. Uh, wrote it as the Great Tribulation. But if you want to uh, properly use it, it's the Tribulation period, seven years. The last half of the Tribulation is called the Great Tribulation. Jesus said if God had not shortened the days, none would survive. So again, 666, the mark of the beast, though we don't know exactly what it is, it will be implemented and by force, all put to death who rebel, and the Bible says that all those who are saved during the tribulation, they're called the tribulation saints, they refuse the mark of the beast and are beheaded. So the mandates are going to be like nothing the world has ever seen because they're not going to be regionally enforced. They're going to be globally enforced by some type of wicked military power that will carry out uh, these horrible deeds. Secondly, and more importantly, the mark of the beast 666 is a permanent and visible sign that you have pledged your life and sworn your allegiance to the global control of the Antichrist. And let me make this point clear. No one is going to take the mark of the beast accidentally. All will take the mark of the beast 666. The mark is identified with the man. I hope I've made that clear as we've been teaching on this. I begin with that point, that the 666 is the number of a man. But though it is the number of the man that will identify this one world leader, the Antichrist, 
that same number that identifies the Antichrist as a man will identify his mark. Number four, we're talking about the five most important things I feel every Bible student needs to understand about the number 666. Number four, the 666 mark of the beast will not be revealed until halfway through the tribulation. Let me repeat that. The 666 mark of the beast will not be revealed until halfway through the tribulation. I don't know how to make this any clearer than I'm about to make it. The mark of the beast does not yet exist. Exclamation point. I know that might offend several who have preached it and taught it and identified it. And, you know, I heard some guy recently on YouTube saying it was Apple smartwatch and trying to tie this technology. Stay away from such shallow scholarship, please. The mark of the beast is not revealed until halfway through the tribulation. So anybody trying to tell you what the mark of the beast is, is a poor scholar. And they shouldn't be on your list of people that you trust when you open your Bible. Find people who give you the scriptures without fear of men and translate the scriptures and interpret scriptures properly and say what the Bible says and refuse to say what the Bible doesn't say. Since the mark of the beast is not implemented until halfway through the tribulation, I'm going to say it one more time, the mark of the beast does not yet exist. A literal reading of the Old Testament book Daniel, and by the way, if you're a new student of the Bible, Daniel is perhaps one of the major prophetic books in the Old Testament that somewhat walks hand in hand with the book of Revelation in the New Testament. And there are other, time, uh, other end time books in the Bible that speak of Bible prophecy, but when you study these books, Daniel, Revelation, other prophecy texts and contexts, one of the things that you're going to learn is there is a very specific schedule for the unfolding of these end time events. The mark of the beast cannot exist until the beast himself is in power during the tribulation. Now to me that's just common sense, but yet I hear so many uh, teachings trying to identify uh, the Antichrist and trying to identify the mark of the beast and trying to uh, identify certain tattoos and RFID chips and on and on and on. The mark of the beast does not yet exist and it cannot exist until the Antichrist is revealed and that will not take place until after the rapture of the church. Please put what I'm about to say into your notes. All believers in the church age, we are now living in the church age. If you've not heard me teach on the church age, Jesus prophesied in Matthew 16, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The church age is a specific time in biblical, not just history, but currently and continuing, it began with the first advent of Christ. When Christ came to the earth, He was the conception form of the church. But it was inaugurated in Acts chapter 2 when they were empowered by and filled with the Holy Spirit. This initial group of believers who had gathered in the upper room in obedience to the teaching of Christ became the actual embodiment of the Spirit-filled church. And so the conception of the church actually was with the first advent of Christ. It was inaugurated in Acts chapter 2 with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, filling believers with Holy Spirit power, and it will continue until the rapture of the church. After the rapture of the church, we who are in Christ are gone from this earth. 11 thầy trò chúng ta cùng đi tiếp tục đi tìm hiểu cái dạng số 3 đó là xác định các đại lượng đặc trưng của dao động điều hòa nó thuộc cái chương 1 đó các bạn. 
thì cái dạng này nó cũng rất là quan trọng đây là một trong những cái dạng là theo thầy đánh giá nó ở mức độ cơ bản nó chỉ là mức độ cơ bản thôi các bạn ạ à. như vậy là à, các bạn nào ví dụ như à, chúng ta đã rành rồi thì chúng ta có thể bỏ qua cái video này mức độ cơ bản mức độ trung bình thôi các bạn và bây giờ thầy trò chúng ta sẽ đi tìm hiểu cái phương pháp của nó thì rất là dễ các bạn cứ nắm cái công thức á cứ nắm công thức nắm bản chất vật lý là chúng ta sẽ làm được cái dạng này và để đi hiểu rõ về cái dạng này nó ra sao thì thầy trò chúng ta sẽ đi sửa các bài tập nó khoảng cỡ chừng 7 bài tập trong cái phần video này bây giờ thầy trò chúng ta đi tìm hiểu nha câu số 1 một con ong mật đang bay tại chỗ trong không trung đập cánh với tần số đây là tần số là chữ F đó các bạn đúng không trong vật lý của chúng ta tần số khi hiệu là chữ F là 300 hẹt xác định số dao động mà cánh con ong mật thực hiện trong một giây và chu kỳ của cánh con ong thì chúng ta đã biết rằng tần số chính là số dao động trong một đơn vị thời gian đúng không hay là một giây như vậy bài này nó nói số dao động trong một đơn vị thời gian thì đó chính là tần số như vậy các bạn trả lời là số dao động trong một đơn vị thời gian chính là bằng f được chưa số dao động trong một đơn vị thời gian chính là bằng tần số